Hi, and welcome to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, the post harvest podcast that interviews people of interest across the food supply chain. Today on our show, I'm joined by Wayne Nathanson from Neolithics, who I'll be talking to about how their AI software integrates seamlessly to detect, classify, and sort crops on conveyors to help increase yields. So, with no further delays, let's get started. Well, hi, Wayne. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we get into it, could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to work in the food tech industry and maybe a fun fact about yourself? Okay, so uh, my background's always been in business development and sales. I've been in the technology industry and software. And then I spent um, a number of years in agriculture. Actually, um, I worked in the Netherlands, what I would consider to be the center of the agricultural world. Mm -hmm. And now when I was there, I realized that, um, you know, the world needed to re-engineer the way that it produced and distributed food. And I was interested in getting into that as, um, you know, not only a trend, but as a very important area that we have to focus on. And, um, mm -hmm. so I went for an opportunity in food tech. Uh, so a fun fact, um, I'm Canadian, although I worked the last five, six years in the Netherlands, uh, I live in Israel now. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I'm a person who likes adventure. <laughs> Fantastic. Where, whereabouts from Canada do you hail from? I'm from Toronto for most of mm -hmm. my life, originally mm -hmm. from an island off the East coast called Newfoundland. Great. Most people have never heard of before, but it's yeah. very obvious island off the coast yeah. of North America. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, I do because I, I lived in Toronto for a few years, oh, not too wow. long ago, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of a small world. We're, we're, we're just a couple of jet setters, aren't we? Newfoundland is the, uh, the brunt of the jokes in Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a beautiful place though, but, um, very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get bogged down in, in, in talking geography, uh, let's talk farm to fork. So would you be able to tell us a little bit about the history of Neolithics and what solutions and technology they provide to the food industry? Well, the history is short. It's only about two and a half years. Most of that has been in the development of our solution that's focused on food waste. That was the motivation behind the company and the founders saw the need uh, to improve the way the food was distributed in the supply chain. And um, we have, as one of the founders, a food scientist. And I think that I could talk a bit about later, but that food science component of what we're doing is our secret sauce. It's the differentiator mm. that uh, distinguishes Neolithics from anything that's in the industry currently. Mm. And so wh what are these solutions and, and technology that Neolithics provides? So our technology is a software uh, artificial intelligence solution called Crystalline. Um, we do quality control inspection of fruits and vegetables, and we cater to companies who are in the fresh produce supply chain, anywhere from post harvest after it comes out of the field, all the way through processors and distributors to, uh, the consumer. So to a retail uh, distributor. And so. How does your crystal eye technology conduct internal and external inspections of fresh produce supplies? So we use sensors to take images of fresh produce and our sensors, along with its illumination, uh, the way that we light up the fruit is able to see not only the exterior of the fruit, but we can see the interior of the fruit as well. Hmm. And that gives us the ability to provide information to food distributors uh, that they wouldn't normally have. The fact that we can see inside with sensors means that we can give a food distributor information without destroying the fruit. 
Mm. And 35% of the food waste in the supply chain comes from inspection and logistics, just moving it around. So that is the area that we're focused on. And there's over, uh, in the United States, they waste over 50% of the fresh produce that is grown and it's a yeah. phenomenal number. So what we need to do is figure out how to reduce that waste in order to continue feeding the population, because the estimate today is that we're going to run out of food by the year 2050. And I don't believe that's going to happen because we see the dramatic change in the way that food is provided, the way it's grown, we're re-engineering the industry. So you've talked about how it's a non-invasive form of sampling the fresh produce. I was just wondering if you could expand on that as to how Neolithics is more sustainable compared to more traditional quality control practices. So the main thing is that in fresh produce quality control globally, it's mainly done by hand and by eye. Mm. So what we're doing is we're automating a process that is still manual, which is mm. hard to believe in today's world. I remember when I started in technology, I would go around and tell people what they could do with a computer and how mm -hmm. to automate their business. It was things like billing and inventory control. Yeah. Um, so when we're talking to people about automating quality control, it's phenomenal that commercially quality control is done very similar way to the way we do it when we go into a supermarket to buy fruits and vegetables. Yeah. We pick it up, we feel it, we look at it, and we make a judgment call based on the feel and the look. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the quality control commercially is done that way. But sometimes, um, they have to see the inside of the fruit or vegetable. Mm -hmm. The way that's done is by cutting it and doing certain types of, you know, sometimes laboratory experiments or different types of analysis that destroy the fruit. Mm -hmm. So if we can use our sensors to see inside the fruit and give information like sugar content, acidity. Uh, we can identify defects or bacteria that's inside the fruit that's going to impact its, let's say maturity or ability to be sold, then, you know, that's a major game changer because if you are curious, go to the back of any grocery store and you'll see most of the things in their garbage can are fresh fruit and vegetables that have been spoiled and can no longer be sold. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd imagine being able to actually put the fresh produce under the uh, microscope, so to speak, would have a lot better results with forecasting as opposed to simply eyeballing a product. So that's really awesome. That's really exciting. Providing more information than they have today, and we're doing it in a higher volume and providing data that gives them the ability to make decisions that will ultimately improve the quality of the produce. It will improve the consistency of the quality and uh, give them more information to make decisions on how to utilize the fruit mm. or vegetables better. So if a tomato is too soft to go to the supermarket, cause it'll never be sold in time for it to spoil, then it should be going to a ketchup maker or a tomato sauce maker or something where yeah. it can still be utilized. Yeah. Fantastic. So then what are some of the challenges that the team at Neolithics has had to face when developing the crystal eye technology? So the biggest challenge is the obvious question that most people ask, well, how do you do it? And <laughs> that that's the secret sauce. We have food scientists on staff that have studied spatial recognition of produce and they know based on the images that we see what the colors and the, what the colors mean from a perspective of content and that is the the secret sauce so it's not just taking the images and feeding it into our ai engine 
but it's what happens in between that. What does the AI engine know about what it sees? And that comes from our food science department. That's great. So then would you be able to share any success stories or case studies from customers who have switched to using your technology for their produce inspections? Well, there's a number of them. One of the ones that I like is um, a company in the grape vineyard business. They are yep. one of the world's largest producers of wine. And yep. what they need when the grapes come off the field is they need to measure the sugar content in the grapes. And mm -hmm. what the sugar content tells them is how much alcohol they can produce and therefore what wine the different grapes should go into. And they also mm. told their uh, farmers based on the sugar contents that's in the grapes. So in the past, they used a method to measure the sh sugar content that would take them about uh, 30 to 45 minutes per truck. So a truck would come in with the big bins filled with grapes. Mm -hmm. What we do is we scan the grapes in the truck as the truck passes underneath our scanners. And in seconds, we tell them the sugar content. Wow. So they eliminate it that half hour to 45 minutes that was creating a tremendous lineup and a delay. And yeah. we're giving information in seconds and then feeding it directly into their billing system and their payment system so that they can handle it administratively as well. That's fantastic. So it's, it's revolutionizing the, the winery business. They do quality control inspection. Yeah. I mean, that's such a time saver and uh, a weight off the shoulders. That's fantastic. So then what have you found to be the biggest surprise while working in ag tech? Well, that's easy. How much food is wasted? I don't think we realize. The biggest problem in the future with feeding people is that we waste a lot of food. And mm -hmm. so everybody knows how much food we waste in our kitchens or how much spoils in their fridges. Um, but what happens on the supply chain is not very well known. And even though we see people in the supermarkets picking out the, the bad apples, so to speak, it doesn't really resonate in our minds what's happening. And what's happening is, as I said before, that uh, almost half of the produce produced goes to waste. We don't even mm. get a chance to eat. So we got to yeah. change that. Yeah, absolutely. Following on this thread and maybe taking a step away from the solution that Neolithics is providing, what, in your opinion, represents one of the main challenges or pain points in the fight against food loss and waste? Motivation. That means change. It means that mm -hmm. people have to revisit what they're doing. And so in a lot of cases, when I talk to companies, I see that they have a motivation. It might be cost or it might be quality standards. But in a lot of places in the world, there isn't enough motivation yet. And yeah. one of the things that I heard one time at a food tech conference is we all appreciate what it's like when we're fighting over energy uh, from one country to another. Can you imagine in the future if we had to fight over food and water? Mm -hmm. That's a big risk and something that we've got to, you know, make sure it doesn't happen. So then how do you see the ag tech industry evolving in the next five to 10 years? Well, we're in the, uh, software business that has, um, an artificial intelligence engine mm -hmm. and it's not unique, but it's rare. And I think that in months or a few short years, artificial intelligence will be a predetermining factor for being in the software business. It'll, it's going to change our life and everybody hears more about AI and, you know, chat GPT, which is, um, you know, available for free. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft has made a heavy investment to provide algorithms for companies to build in and we can make a lot 
better decisions and uh, analyze a lot more data that is meaningful and valuable. And I think that alone will change the way that agriculture is farmed and mm -hmm. the way it's distributed around the world. Yeah, no, I agree. On that note, is there a particular group or innovation within the industry that you're excitedly keeping a watchful eye on? Um, I have a uh, small investment in an Israeli startup called Remilk okay. that I've been fascinated with. I don't know if you did an interview with them, but the fact that we can create milk from a cell mm. all milk mm. and we don't eat cows. I mean, this whole food tech business of creating uh, food, whether it be meat or fish or mm. milk without using animals is incredibly fascinating and it's a necessary requirement to revolutionize the way people eat and hopefully will it'll be for the better it'll be healthier but i can't imagine not barbecuing a steak that came from a cow <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we've had a few different cell cultured product companies on the podcast but i don't think we've had anyone in, in the area of milk before. That's interesting. I'll keep an eye out for that. So then what advice would you give to entrepreneurs looking to start a company in the food tech space? Well, I think it's not just in the food tech space, but any entrepreneur that I would give advice to about any startup would be to make sure that there's a justification for their solution. Mm -hmm. There's lots of great ideas in this world, but if you can't justify why a company would use it, then it's wasted energy and, uh, and not really applied well. So I think that's, that's a consideration that everybody has to make when they're deciding what business to in and, and what's the reason for it. Yeah, agreed. Well, Wayne, we are coming to a close, but before we do, I just wanted to ask you, what is the major point you really want the listeners to take away from this episode? I guess the thing that we all have to consider is uh, what impact can each of us have on reducing food waste? It could be as simple as not buying as much fresh produce or food that can't be eaten in time, mm -hmm. but, um, it's going to be a much more exposed part of our life over the coming years. And mm -hmm. it's important for us to pay attention and be motivated to make a difference for the sake of yeah. our kids. Couldn't agree more. Well, that's all for today's episode of let's talk farm to fork. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Wayne, for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and to be part of your mission. If you'd like to know more about Wayne and Neolithics, check out the link in the description of this episode. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And don't forget to write a review and share with your friends. Until next time, you've been listening to Let's Talk Farm to Fork, a post-harvest podcast. Mm -hmm.